Welcome to the second part of muddling through and learning Dwarf Fortress. In the first video, we set up our fort and we made it through about the first year of our fort's life cycle. And I've actually zoomed ahead a bit here to year two. We're going to be... I, I just like to put a disclaimer at the beginning of each of these videos that I'm going to be learning as we go through. I've got Twitch chat right here with a lot of questions. I try to edit these parts out as I go through them in the video. I'm going to try to index this video a bit, but I'm going to start to muddle through more and more as we get through this series. There won't be tons of violence because I'm learning, but there will be awesome discoveries, and if you feel like muddling through the game alongside me, I invite you to do so. Um, I just want to kind of give a quick shout out to a lot of people that I've learned from. So I had mentioned um, Nook, Nookrium from the last time. I encourage you guys to go check him out. I know he's been putting out some great tutorials. And we also rated uh, the person who I, I think Nook learned from the last time too. We just sent uh, uh, some of our folks over to Das Tactic from before. So I would definitely encourage you guys to go check any of them out. Um, I know Quill has also been doing, a lot of people have been doing them, but just Quill I've learned so much about gaming and stuff from too. Um, unfortunately, I did not see his Dwarf Fortress videos. I didn't learn from those, but I know a lot of other great folks have been doing these. So I just want to shout out those people. Uh, there's a lot of great other uh, YouTubers doing stuff on this right now. But yeah, we're going to be kind of muddling through and just doing things in a very sort of uh, normal order. But I, I have figured out some stuff from the last time. And I'm going to go through a list of things that, uh, that I've figured out about our fort since we began. Um... Let me see. So first off, yeah, there will be things that I don't understand, and if we don't know how to do them, I'm probably just going to edit those out, or if I can quickly resolve them, that's about it. I've got about 50 hours in Dwarf Fortress now, but I'm going to ask about basic questions, and obviously my sole ambition in this video is to drown everyone by channeling the river. I think that would be a, a very exciting way. We've got the water flowing here, but um, yeah, very nice to see some kind of movement. I've been told that this code that Tarn wrote for this is involves math, so that's very exciting. And it's just amazing. I don't know. The flowing water in this game is quite cool. And we did manage to, f like, get out our own uh, puddle of water here. I wanted to see if we could do the bucket thing. And the bucket thing is fairly easy. We just went to the carpenter's workshop and we started ordering a bunch of wooden buckets made. Then the dwarves got the water from the river over there. Uh, and I had ordered a pond to be created with the zone. I had to dig out a channel which is, uh, sorry, I keep hitting D for designate. So you mine out, and then you go to dig a channel, and on the upper level, you order one channel dug. And then if they do that, I'm just going to cancel that here. Or, you know what, I might as well, just to kind of, for the sake of showing it, let's do it. Let's make our pond a little bit bigger, just because I think that this is quite a cool mechanic, uh, and one that deserves to be shown a bit. So we're going to go ahead and channel that. And we've got, like, the water coming over on here. And we're going to do that. Oh, I need to kind of up the priority here. Uh, let's up that to a priority one, and hopefully they'll do it in shorter order. But yeah, now it's blinking, so it shows that a dwarf is coming over to do it. And if we just dig this out, look, he's channeled over more water. And now this has gone down from a level six to a level three. And they'll probably start to dump more water in there until it gets higher up. Ooh, the water is slightly moving now. That's kind of cool. And it seems that there is a bit of chalk in there. And there's a dusting of mud. Anyway, the reason why I wanted to do this was because you can start to irrigate your floors, and you know how we had come to this loamy sand cavern floor up top, which was acceptable for farming? Well, if we hadn't had that, we would have had to irrigate our floors in order to do any farming, although we could just go deeper down, but it is quite a cool thing to see, and if we could get water on the floor, I mean, we might need to do it. There's even supposedly evaporation, which I didn't even know about in the coating. Ooh, look, it's flowing back and forth. Very exciting. Um, what else is there? Channeling the whole thing, you can make an indoor pond. Use, yeah, we, there's a lot more we could do with water, like artificial waterfalls and other, all kinds of other things, but I'm, uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to make that pretty much the goal of this time. <laughs> uh, we'll see how far we get with it. Um, what else is there to say? Oh, they have started making the, oh, we discovered a magma pool? Wait a moment. How did this happen? Oh, wait, this could be our inevitable death. Very exciting once again. So I did tell them to dig down many levels, and they started to discover a cavern. There are many caverns in Dwarf Fortress. Uh, mushroom Forest Tower Cap Cap. That, that is literally its name, Tower Cap Cap. Tower Cap Cap, many of them down here. But we have overhanging cavernous caverns down here. And where is the magma pool? Oh, there is the magma pool. So there is magma down here. Now you know where Minecraft got its inspiration. 
also very exciting. Um, uh, we went down further, though, in this thing. Was the magma pool further down here? No, I suppose not. Very cool. Uh, we're all going to burn to death, though. But now we have magma to do something with. That's interesting and exciting. Magma at neg- uh, we're at negative four. Do we have magma at negative one? No, I don't see any there. Uh, but it seems as though, well, why is it widening when we get further out? That's a bit funny because we aren't quite at the edge of the map here yet. Where is the map edge? Whatever it is. Magma pool plus channeled river with a gate. Yes. Well, my one ambition of having a lava river uh, what may not be met unless we have a lot of buckets, in which case... Uh, I did get a story from somebody in the comments that was quite entertaining about uh, a grandma who had drowned in lava. Not a real-life grandma, mind you. That wouldn't be funny. But a dwarf fortress grandma who had drowned in lava, which was very exciting. I'm going to go ahead and make a hotkey. So, uh, yeah, hotkey for zoom to locations. So I've got three locations hot uh, centered here. I couldn't find this before, but I knew that this was in Classic. It's a very useful feature that allows you to zoom to certain positions. So we have our wagon, which I hit F1 to do this. F2, which I made our meeting zone. F3, which I made the cavern that I discovered or a spot on it I wanted to go to. And then F4, which I'm now making the lava, because lava seems very significant to me. So I want to be able to quickly get back and forth there rather than having to go, okay, I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down, I'm scrolling down, now I'm at the cavern. It's just a lot of mouse wheel work, so I, I think we're better off without it. Again, I know I hadn't been making a lot of use of the UI the last time, but it's cool to use hotkeys. I'm just saying. Although it is kind of against the purpose of the Steam version. What I'm finding with the Steam version is that I can muddle through the UI better. Anyway, I think that was the, some of the cool stuff. Somehow my food and drink situation hasn't died out, despite my lack of understanding of the work order screen, which is I am learning now to be interpreted as little literal code. Like, I was thinking that brew drinks from Planet... So we have 414 drinks. We've got 63 out of 200. The amount of drinks available is less than 25. So when it says not satisfied, this means that this is l l like a double negative the way it's being interpreted. It's kind of like reading computer code a bit. I'm being a, maybe a bit lofty in my expectations there, but I am just kind of a single-celled amoeba brain right now as far as understanding the work orders goes. I'm sure I'll get it as we go along. Other than that, we did... What else did we do? Our military. Let's move on to that. It's been a little bit of time on military. So if we go into our zones, I designated another barracks over here. And I'm pretty sure, did I use... Yeah, I had to designate which squads we'll use. So I had to designate... A, there's so many asterisks on everything I'm saying here, so I apologize for this. But this is just the way the Dwarf Fortress works. Once you get it, you got it, and you're done getting it, which is nice. However, we had to designate a militia commander. So the Hatchets of Passion are being led by Kogan Zuntershamib. The militia commander. And that is cool. Because we now have an armor stand, which they for some reason aren't using, and I'm trying to figure out why. And a shale armor stand and a weapon rack oh, sorry, weapon racks over here of differing materials. And uh, armor stands which look vaguely like the burning man. I'm going to probably be doing an archery area, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Speaking of which, we have a bridge. What else is there to say? Buckets and irrigation. I think I pretty much said everything I need to there. If we're going to be getting lava, can you get lava in buckets? Or do you need to channel it? I'm assuming that you can bring it up in buckets. Because I'm guessing that wooden buckets won't work for lava, if I'm not wrong there. But, uh, yeah, we'll just have to see about that. Excuse me. Other things that are cool. Trading. We did a bit of trading, but I... The things I was trying to trade were too heavy, so I couldn't really do it very well. Okay, using pumps. That is fair. Keep in mind that I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't take everything I say as gospel truth. You might not be... You just might not be able to do it at all. Uh, but let's see. I don't want to spread misinformation about... My campaign of misinformation about Dwarf Fortress. Ha ha. It has no end. Let's put dolomite here. I'm just making a lot of large stairways. TBD, whether this is really the right thing to do, I honestly don't know, but I'm just going to continue with my kind of cursed setup, and I'm personally enjoying it. Let's also put in more stairs here. I'm trying to get them, like, a decent, a bit of a decent wall here. Here we go. Microcline. Oh, we seem to be out of dolomite. We shall use dolomite, then, of course, which I just found, and I was not seeing a second ago. <laughs> 
That is quite nice. Uh, we do have a bit of a wall. I wanted to make the wall come up to the same level, but we're still out of a cliffside, and I, I like the way that it looks. I'm okay with it. It's simple, but... You know, you can go back to video one to understand the way that the view, that the view is, is taking place. But also, too, I had one wall here. I got rid of the ramps on the side of this, uh, which was just mining, and then I got rid of the ramps here, designated constructed walls, floors, and other blah, blah, blah. You can get rid of these hillsides if you want to and replace them with walls because they aren't really suitable for the foundation of a wall. Other than that, I don't really know if this will give us much defense, but I, it's... It looks pretty right now, so that's the main reason I did it. Farming has been okay, but I don't really know why we're getting fungus growing. I guess fungus causes the growth of more fungus. I don't know if that's a danger to us. So far, it hasn't been. I think we're okay. Magma buckets out of... Really? You can? Wait, you can use... Well, we'll, we'll see about those wooden buckets later on. Uh, but what else is there? I wanted to dig deep. We've pretty much done the digging deep, so we'll do a little bit of exploring in that cave today. I think you pretty much just need to dig down, uh, like, a lot. And that's, and that's quite, that's quite enough. But what else is there? It's fungus spread, but it's fine. That's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, so just removing the ramps near the walls. I'm in agreement with you. I think we don't want enemies scaling the walls. I'm making the walls very high... I'm putting them on the inside, though. Either that or they will be used against us. Which would be exciting and a uh, lesson learned in danger. I think that's pretty much all of the main stuff I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, we had a guy die. We had a guy die. Unfortunately, he went raving mad and then he was dehydrated because he refused to drink. Asked Adam Letos. Letmos. Sounds Greek. She was a glassmaker. I believe that's a she. She has long hair and a beard. She has such a feminine form. So, there is her skeleton, and we buried her, and she's dead. I think that's pretty much it. We were making thread of pigtails at a workshop as well. We did the farmer's workshop to do this. I'm, I'm partly working off of the flowchart as well. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to turn back on notifications now. Um, there's more to say, there's more to do, there's always going to be, but yeah, I wanted to do most of the stuff that I kind of had an idea of what I was doing. So what should we really do next, I guess, is what we should ask ourselves about this fort. I could do archery, I could go straight for the water. There's low natural savagery in this world, so it might be a little while before we're attacked. But also, it's nice having a wall that functions. I was thinking, too, that it might be nice to position stairs and maybe a real gate somewhere. Maybe even create a moat around here. Maybe we could use that for channeling the water. And instead of just bringing buckets back and forth, we could channel part of the river out. Would be exciting. Killing traders. You can seize goods of traders. Recommend making a magma forge over that lava out of some fireproof materials so you can start making military for gear for dig deep military. That sounds quite cool. Or also channeling the lava, maybe with a massive number of screw pumps. Oh, look, our dwarves are beginning on their training regimen. So I will also show this very quickly. Um, where is their training regimen? If I could find it. If I had a trophy. Uh, what are, what are you doing? Can we see schedule? Yes, this was their schedule. Okay, I'm not entirely sure if this is the best training schedule, but I don't want them to be training all the time because many of these people have other duties. So I ordered them to train four months a year. The first, it's like kind of a fiscal quarter. Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, that's when they train. And then I guess they go back to work in the other months. But yeah, we have an 86 year old dwarf. I don't know how long they live for, so hopefully they'll stay with us for a bit longer. Individual combat drill, and the cats seem to be coming to and fro here. Now, I suppose we could make an archery squad. We could do that. Uh, all we would need... We would need some sort of bin... I think there's an ammo bin to be had here. I was watching uh, Das's tutorial on it. I think he, he did a very good job on it. Though I sometimes can't find the designations where they are in here. So let's have something army. Because everyone likes fighting. I think we do this and we can put channels underneath. I'm pretty much just copy-pasting Das's idea. Because I thought it was very cool. Once again, shout out to... All the folks I mentioned at the beginning of the video because I think they're great at explaining things, but also too. Uh, yeah, this is kind of awesome. Apple, we have so many wood logs. Whoops, I'm, I keep going out of the wrong menu. 
There we go. So hitting that repeat button is helpful. We could do it out of... Let's just do, use the closest material because I'm not too picky about these things. But I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll mine out the wall behind this. And then we're going to channel that so that as I learned before, we can like collect these arrows. So let's go down a level. I could have been a bit more mindful of the spacing in my fort, but oh well. We probably should have left more levels so that we could have put a trap underneath people, but I also didn't want them to be, you know, like walking around and not knowing where they were going. So if we do this... Oh no, part of this channel will be in the wood storage. I may just need to change where I've put these things. I think that may work better because otherwise I'm going to do this all wrong. Let's go ahead and just say, uh, get, get rid of these things. Let's put them up somewhere else. Cancel, rem uh, whoops. Remove. Remove. There we go. So let's mine this out this away. Because we're going to create a channel to the level below this in here. And then they'll go down it to catch the arrows that haven't, that haven't hit the archery target. And then they can go collect them later on tavern oh we don't actually have the tavern set up yet so let's go ahead into here and then we could do well we have a dining room right now but we don't have one for travelers that's fair we could also mine out one of those that's also quite a basic thing thank you let's do that like there again not really putting things in the perfect place in this series but just sort of doing them in the order in which i discover them because i think that that is maybe helpful or important Later on, once we get the the kind of efficiency, then we'll do it right. What else is there? Monsters below just... I mean, we could have opened up that danger down below to mobs and things like that that we would have had to fight. Oh, look at all of that magma. Is it spreading? Why is there so much more of it now? Maybe we've done some... Exploration. Yeah, clearly this continues on here, but no dwarf has walked here before. It's cool the way that it animates, though, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. Let's go back up to the top. It is cool. Wild animals can mess it, dig monsters. Hold your hold your horses. Hold your horses. We're not there yet. Um, I'm going to go into B. D. Let's do doors. We have plenty of doors made. Let's just use the closest material again. I'm finding that that's good. I don't really get too detailed with this stuff. Now, one useful thing is that we can just keep scrolling downward to see what's on the level directly below. This is helpful for, like, coordinating our constructions in a nice way. Uh, especially over multi-level things, which I didn't make much use of the last time. However, I think that this time we'll try to get a little bit more detailed with that. Let's do this. I'm not sure if they store... The do they store these archery targets down below when they remove them? It doesn't seem as if they do. I forgot to mention one other thing, too. This is a bit of a boring bit, but uh, in the stockpile zones, I changed the all zone because it seemed as if it was taking in miasma-infested corpses, which is this sort of purple disease that spreads out like a gas around it. And you don't want miasma because it spreads... What is it? Sickness and disease? Other stuff like that, I'm pretty sure. But we, we changed this to custom, and I found that the, the menu for this is quite good, to be to be fair. And I just was not making use of it the last time. I just wanted to point this out because we have food, which we have allowed no food here. No corpses, no refuse, no stone, and no wood. Those are pretty much all of the items that I put into my other stockpiles. So this is a bit of a catch-all uh, catch stockpile zone. I would like to do one for furniture individually because we have a lot of it. But yeah, just separating out anything that we have a lot of. Anyway, a bit more on that later. Uh, what else? Yeah, I, I, I want to say also, too, thank you for leaving just interesting comments on the YouTube videos. I, I was enjoying reading about people's forts. I thought it would be more tipful, but I guess more people are learning the game right now. Although I did get many good tips, which I hope I can take advantage of some of them, so thank you for that. Anyway, let's go ahead and put in... I'm trying to remember these hotkeys, but we'll just keep going through with the UI. We've got um, armor stand. I don't believe we need a ballista and a catapult here, so this is just more targets. I think that's the only one for the barracks here. We could have a barracks for them to sleep in, and we could have separate rooms for that, but I figure they've already got bedrooms, so I don't see much of the point of that. Maybe there is one, though, that I just don't get, but I'm just going to leave them in their bedrooms. 
Um, let's go ahead and mine out more of this wall just because I want this to look nice. And then we'll mine out this wall. And I think here in this last lane, we'll put the channel. Uh, once in a while, viewer for showcase shares. That would be kind of cool. Although I feel that there are many good channels that just present the force. You know, and I've been hesitant to put this on the main channel because I simply know that any time I would try to over-edit this game, it just simply isn't. People want to see the game up close and they want to learn it right now. So I am very happy with that. No, I, th I think I'm going to take my precious time there before we do anything on the main channel. Maybe a while. I want to really know what I'm doing too. Okay, so here I'm going to coordinate a channel. This is exciting. Hopefully we will do this right. I'm just going to dig a bit into here for now. Uh, we are, we've currently got time on. So I'm having him dig a tunnel down here. Where hopefully if we did this right, and let's go ahead and dig mine. I keep thinking dig, so D, but mine. So we're going to channel here, and then all of the arrows that miss should fall, I believe, into this channel. Cool. So then we dig, or we mine, and let's go from this square back to there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's fun. Look at the way that they're digging. That's very nice. <sighs> Multiple levels of... Oh, it's three-dimensional in a two-dimensional game. This is nice. So pretty much what happens in this room, and we should assign a zone to this. Let's make this another barracks. Or uh, we'll make this an archery range. Whoops, it easy. We'll do that. I'm pretty sure I can make this a bit larger, to be fair. I think we can include the doors. Whoops. Uh... I don't think it makes that big a difference, but it, ooh. Oh, I did painting instead. Whoops. I think we can do this for our rooms because it seems to include the walls. Rooms seem to be able to overlap, and that's consistent with what I remember and the way designations would occur in uh, Legacy. Uh, where is there a petition? Hang on a second. I do want to check this out. Thola Trusted Notch wishes to reside in Mountainhead for the purpose of eradicating Mar. Oh, this is the dwarf we got for Pop 22. Okay, that's fine. Apog meeting die also wants to eradicate monsters so we're taking in a couple of extra dwarves I think that's great I think that's fine these are people is this just the knights in armor who are coming here that's great to me I mean we have more people who are just coming in I think I've set the game on a very easy difficulty though so I'm going to say that just pause that right there I'm an expert <laughs> of course I know what I'm doing uh, no <laughs> let's go ahead here D I think it's P door the one thing I do really like is the the clicking UI has made this a lot more just enjoyable to place down beds and everything. I suppose this is the way that they are shooting at the targets, which would probably be good to know, because I don't want them to start shooting each other. So let's go ahead and uh, tell some squads to, to make this, but also do we need the squad to begin with. So let's make an archer squad. This is being led by the free crystals. Again. Very exciting. We're going to assign another leader, and we will make... I'm thinking... Okay, we have other dwarves and other squads, but let's try to get someone who doesn't already have an office, not too many responsibilities. A ranger sounds like a great leader for this squad, I think. So, novice marks dwarf. I'm surprised that it doesn't show these in order. No relevant skills, no relevant skills, no relevant skills. So, yeah, the ranger obviously makes the best one. Um, let me see. Here we go. So, you do that. And... There we go. Hey, thank you very much for the good little raid. Do appreciate that, Pygo. There we are. Um, let's see if we can get some more dwarves along here for this. Call Abel Monum. Why don't you... I mean, none of you are going to have relevant skills for the most part. Dar actually, Darren, our broker, is a novice Marks dwarf, so... I suppose that we'll make Darren... I mean, Doran. Doran sounds like a good dwarf name. That sounds very Tolkien-ish. Uh, Ezim Onolalis, the stone crafter. You got nothing to do. Why don't you do that? Okay, so we're gonna go back to the squads. They're off duty, but some of these people are doing staggered training. So we go into this squad and we tell them now. Schedule. We could have monthly orders. Let's see if this default training works for me. Staggered training. Let's just see how this is. View monthly schedule. So this has them train between the months of I'm going to call that April Hematite. 
and Galena, so I suppose June. Oh, but then also for the second half of the year. If this is the proposed staggered schedule, let's give it a shot. Maybe not every fiscal quarter, but you know what? It is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and equip them. Oh, they don't have anything. <laughs> yeah, so now here is where I, I am going to have no idea what I'm doing. So we have set up an archery zone and an archery target, and we will probably smooth out this entire place. But they don't have bows. Um, signing a trading order. They do have their training order. Whoops, I assigned them to train. Cancel the order. Cancel the order. Don't do it. Just do it during your scheduled time. We have set up our military area, and this is quite exciting, except now they're partly shooting at each other, but I'm hoping that they will use that as kind of funny, that they go across the battlefield to pick up their ammunition. We may need a hospital visit soon, so we'll see if we can figure that out. Uh, however, I have I've kind of been following along with the tutorial here. Uh, this is a DAS one, I think, just to put a channel underneath this. I'm hoping that they will walk underneath and maybe grab the ammo that way. Maybe we should dig this further down even so that they have no temptation to go in and grab the ammo that way. I'm thinking maybe, yeah, two levels down because they're definitely going <laughs> definitely going to get themselves killed here. So let's do, um, yeah, let's do the channel. Ooh, I think we'll do it this way. My plan is for this. I have my archer dwarves set to practice seasonally. I think it's about half of the year that they're going to do this. And I want them to shoot the targets, but not each other. So they shoot the targets, but they often go into the back. So let's go ahead and make this deeper. <laughs> um, or we don't even need to do that, really. We could just channel, and then we could just mine, and then X out to get rid of these channels. Yeah, so then that made it fall down from the floor above. And let's just make that really high priority, because I want them to do that ASAP. Uh, and let's also, we'll do mining. Here we go. This is a very cool thing, because it gets training organized, and in a safe way. In a safe way. Good, our miners are mining. So we're getting rid of the access from the upper floor in order to get down here. So it's like a slightly lighter shade of blue, and there's a cat down there again. But now when people go to pick up the ammo, they should do so through the channel. And look, they are going through the tunnel in order to pick up their used bolts. And we have forbidden these from being used during sieges, which is also quite nice, by going into the labor menu. And then we go over to standing orders, and then we tell them in during sieges and forbidding. Forbid used ammo during sieges. I didn't do this for just claim used ammunition, because then apparently they will go pick up their arrows during a siege. Uh, or forbid used ammunition here, but just during sieges, so that way they will go pick up the ammo during training season, but whenever a siege happens, they're going to wait until the siege is over. But this way, they do their practicing. Sometimes the cats get in the way. That's a little weird. Apparently, the dogs can be trained to do this. Are the cats doing this right now, too? Whatever. It's mostly working. Somebody's probably going to get hospitalized by getting shot with a bolt at some point, which would also be very exciting. But, uh... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's going to be massive friendly fire. Um, I think that the channeling... The channel looked cool. The channel did indeed look cool. There might be a way to do that that I just don't fully understand, but at least it did cause this entire layer of stone to get totally eaten up. See, this one is a tunnel because we just ordered the dig. We didn't order the channel on the top one. It's so cool. I'm just... I can't get over this. Hopefully they will start to use these chests for ammunition, although they don't seem to be right now. I'm thinking they're just going to use their common sense, though I don't really know if that's true, so I'm not qualified to discuss that. Okay, as far as bolts and bows and other stuff like that, I did have to go through that. So we did a boyer's workshop to create crossbows, and then we created crafts workshops in order to create uh, the bolts, and we did that with work orders over here. We're also in the, our leatherworks, and they've been doing this without the quivers, so maybe if we give them quivers, that will just make their lives so much better. So let's make quivers. Leather quivers, and we'll make 10 of those. Let's go ahead and put those in. If empty quizzer, quivers is less than 10, I guess we'll do that, so the ones that people aren't using, I suppose. Empty quivers is less than 10, and now I am beginning to understand this work order screen, so we want it to be so that universally there's less than... 10 of these, but I'm st I've been playing around with this stuff. It's like code. Very cool, though. I'm beginning to understand how robust this work screen is. But every day, they're going to check and do the order to make one 10 times 
until they have 10. I could set this to a higher number though, so that every day, like if I set this to, let's say 15, we'll have 15 quivers. So now they're going to make them because they have less than that. However, every day this is gonna decrement by one and they'll make this order 10 times. So they'll make up to 10 quivers a day until they have 15 overall time. So this is starting to make a bit more sense to me. I still don't feel like I fully get it, but I feel like I get 80% of the work order screen now, which is quite a step in the right direction because I so far did not understand it at all. Um, my one very unhappy dwarf. Oh, we should probably go check on him too because one of my dwarves died <laughs> from before and that wasn't so great. Uh, who is this? You don't look too happy. Masterwork barrels being created. Who is unhappy? Why are you unhappy? Oh, a dwarven child. This is like a very entitled sounding child who is sitting in a mushroom patch or something like that. Oh, you're unhealthy. You're very seriously injured and you're hungry. Wait, what happened to you? What the hell did you do? I'm concentrating on something. After being unable to find somebody in charge to yell at, he felt satisfied after receiving water. It would be nice if I had a... He's five. What happened to you? Nothing... Uh... Hmm... Oh, because he can't reach the stairs? Oh, maybe he did get stuck in here. Well, he can get to the... Oh, that's in the level underneath this. He must have fallen in somehow. Yes, he's stuck in there. Good. Why should we save the child? <laughs> Uh, yeah, we have to dig out here. This is quite a simple one. This would be like encasing one of your colonists in stone or something like that. I think we may still be able to save him. Or the adventurer is coming in. No, the adventurer just came in to slay monsters in the in the Underdark. Well, let's hopefully see if our minor dwarf fixes this up. Please, sir. Oh, you're totally fine there. The kid's right there, dude. Bruh. So why didn't somebody go down to save him? Well, we can't do much about that, right? Children are... No, you're not allowed to say that. We have plenty of food. <laughs> we, we do. Oh, it's because we don't have a hospital. Okay, so then let's go ahead and make a hospital. All right, tally-ho, and off we go to make another thing that, uh, that we will bumble through. All right, uh, we have our tavern here. I'm assuming the hospital is probably going to be important to have near the front lines, so I'm going to put this near the meeting hall because presumably we'll be outside when we're fighting in the future if we should fight a lot. Um, yeah, he's probably been horribly, horribly uh, just ruined. <laughs> ruined. Uh, let's go ahead and mine out a hospital. We'll make this one fairly fast, in fact. Uh, tavern. No, we can put it behind the tavern. Go in and have a drink, and then we'll take care of you. Just, we need you to be slightly less, uh, you know, upset. Upset with the way things are right now. Let's go ahead and make a hospital, because I don't want to let one of my dwarves die. And if, if we do this, this would be like the first step toward taking good care of our dwarves. Uh, we have the basics down now. Construction is fine. Okay, we had a, a dwarf fall down a hole, and... Oh, it seems that they have saved him, and they've brought him up. There is his blood everywhere. Because he fell down the stairs. He's... I mean, he might have self-selected out of our... Out of our fort. <laughs> oh, no. Well, we did get the hospital going. Is he still alive? Uh, where is he? Where did they put him? Is he in his bedroom? We did assign this as a hospital. Are they going to bring him up maybe in a wheelbarrow or something of that nature? Uh, it doesn't seem to be in his bed. Where is that boy? Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, so very exciting names for our meeting areas. I had accidentally set our meeting area as a hospital, and they had named it the Home of Paddling, which is, I thought, such a great name that I was ignoring the fact that this is the hospital. It's too bad that we can't keep this name, but I think we could just rename the other zone because that was a great name, I thought. So let's go ahead and make this our meeting area because you have to redesignate the meeting area as the hospital, and I didn't understand that, so let's call this... Well, I don't know. Maybe we'll name that meeting hall later. But let's name the... Let's rename our hospital. This was the barricaded house. But I, I think that the home of paddling is, is even better. This is where people get better. That's nice. Welcome to the home of paddling. We will cure your broken bones. Oh, there's our tavern where all the people are hanging out with a bunch of stones. 
So can we take this diseased child to the hospital? Hopefully. Will somebody go get him? Uh, we do have the rename and the magnifying submenu. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Okay, so there our dwarves are. They have their meeting area. I'm going to go back out here because this is a bit confusing, and this is something that I remembered from Legacy, but it kind of slipped my mind. So you have to redesignate the meeting area as your tavern for travelers to come into, and then as your hospital. It's a bit confusing, but you need to keep reopening the menu to designate libraries, temples, guild halls, in it, and so on and so forth. And it's, it's a bit confusing, to be fair. Singing is occurring in our tavern, and a... An EDM banger has been played in the tavern, so now they're, I guess, singing along to this, but still no one is dragging the kid with the broken legs into the hospital, so I guess they're just going to leave him there, so that's that's the state of our fort, but we did move the traction bench over a bit, so I think I'm just going to let this one play out. It's, it's quite good to hear this, but Jesus, I mean, that is to say they did an amazing job on this soundtrack. They're singing in the Dwarven language, too. Apparently somebody fought a crocodile at the bottom of the stairs. I was thinking that might be the reason why we <laughs> been dealing with this with the child at first. But another thing that I found just now is... Uh, I'm going to go back into this for a second. So we weren't really... I, I had feared that we weren't in a robust way handling our seed problem. And everyone was like, just make sure that you're not brewing the uh, or cooking the plump helmet seeds. And I'm like, I've got it checked off. But we still somehow wound up without enough seeds. Now we have figured out how to always have enough plump helmet seeds. I'm pretty sure anyway. Because what I've decided to do instead is instead of setting the work order to have a required number of drinks all the time, because we had enough drinks and then we just had a bunch of regular pump, plump helmets lying around. And so we were brewing wine. I keep saying plump helmet beer, but it's wine. So we had to go into the work orders tab and we changed the work order to, whoops, a daisy. This should be 200. There we go. And if we go into this tab. Now we have both of two requirements. This is a little bit redundant, but I want to make sure that they always have tons of drinks lying around. So I said, let's make a thousand drinks because there's going to be more dwarves. So let's just do it. They'll do up to 200 and maybe this is too many. <laughs> Say 500. 500. But then we always need a hundred seeds lying around just because I said I want to have a copious number of seeds. That would be useful. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that that is useful to have, anyway. Um, hospital bed needs a table. Make a table, a traction bench, and a bed. So do those all need to be adjacent to each other? Need a table in the hospital so they can operate on the kid. He's going to starve on the floor there. I mean, if he does, then that would just be the story of our fort. Like, somebody's grandma drowning in lava. And I think, personally, that would be very exciting. But there's nothing like getting frustrated and upset with Dwarf Fortress and then having, a, having something go horribly awry. Okay, so we've got that happening. Did the... We put a rock in the bed. I put a table, and I put a bed, and I put a traction bench. But still, nobody cares about this kid. Why are we not, uh... I mean, he is just dying there. I'm fine. <laughs> Shaken, reliving, suffering, a major injury. Uh, that is quite beautiful. Trade Depot. <laughs> I gave in on the Trade Depot. We do have, uh, we have a table, we have a doctor, we have... <laughs> He's like that meme now. <laughs> what is my doctor doing? Let's go check on our units. Yeah, let's go see that. Ability to stand lost. That sounds vaguely uh, without a timeline. No <laughs> Diagnosis required. Crutch required. Okay, this is a thing. Crutch required. Um, maybe we could make him a crutch. Wheelchair? Yeah. Well, let's make him some crutches. So let's go give him a crutch. He'll be like our own. Well, I mean, I did say it would be Dickensian, so we'll make Tiny Tim. So let's go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> I mean, years from now, people will just bang their head against a wall with these things. Can we make... Okay, so we can make a crutch. There we go. So this is amazing. We can at least take care of our just unhappy dwarves. This is exactly what I wanted to do to just understand the game barely enough in order to be able to keep people alive and moving around. This is like my first RimWorld colony, which had a bunch of pyromaniacs in it. It's no fun if the person understands RimWorld in their first playthrough, you know what I mean? Okay, so did we bring this seriously injured child a crutch? Splatter of Bembil Tordern's dwarf blood. Okay, he's seen a lot. Ability to stand lost, we still have. Can someone bring this child a crutch? Assign a doctor to the hospital zone. That would be nice to know. Thank you very much. 
medical dwarves doing that. Will they then take care of him? Or do they try not to... <gasps> they brought him in! Yes! Thank you. Thank you. I do appreciate that. We've managed to get this boy into a bed, and he has been brought to rest in the bed. He's been evaluated and cleaned, evaluated. We're starting to do surgery on him and stuff. So, uh, oh, received tunnel tube splint on the left foot. Very nice. Pigtail dressing. So they are starting to take better care of him. I'm not sure if his leg is ever going to heal quite right, but whatever. We've at least done something. And uh, honestly, this is kind of reminding me of my just bumbling through RimWorld, which is good. Uh, however, I didn't see this. We need to assign the actual doctors in our entire uh, hospital. <laughs> I didn't know that this was a thing. I thought you could just assign the chief medical dwarf. But then one job to each, and we made our chief medical dwarf the main doctor. And then we've just sort of randomly put in other dwarves at the other jobs. However, also, too, we needed to go to the labor menu because we had our chief medical dwarf just doing random hauling, which was quite crazy that they would just do that. But we then turned off the other labors so that our medical dwarves will just do specialized stuff. Some of these might not be perfectly right, but it's yet another part of work order and bills and everything like that. And look, our child is back up and walking. Amazing. Amazing. Incredible. We've also started to carve out another area because we've been... We received a petition for a guild hall, which now we can basically get free guards. So, I mean, why not? Let's do that. Apparently we're going to be sieged at 50 pop. Uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, most of these are unimportant. Making more wood bolts. Why does it give me the message just when wood bolts are made? Uh, we don't have any tanned hides, so we're going to need more for quivers eventually. Uh, the training continues from time to time, so there we are. Chief Medical Dwarf. Wait, we don't need the other ones? Okay, then maybe our Chief Medical Dwarf was just being lazy. But either way, like, you know, it's not the depression. It's not... <laughs> There's so many other things that I can kind of check off of the list of things that it might have been. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. And then we're going to make this into our guild hall. Interesting. Okay, so a woodworker hall. We have no established guild for anything, so we might as well. This is kind of interesting. So we have, wow, so many guilds. This is very dwarven, very like kind of an MMO. I guess miner is probably the most important. Farmer was the requ Oh, was it farmer? That was the one that was requested. Thank you. Do appreciate that. Uh, the guild hall satisfies citizens, lets them share knowledge and train each other. Oh, that's very good. So they can kind of teach each other, like in the, what is that? mod where they just talk to each other and get skills um we don't seem to have a control f here and it's not <laughs> these are some of the things okay this is a bit of a why is it not alphabetized <laughs> i just have to go find farmer <laughs> um and there's no control f either there we go farmer hall all right the saffron animal the saffron animal, amazing. So what kinds of things do we need in a guild hall? I suppose that it's just tables and chairs or something, but I mean, even the tavern is just sort of a room full of rock. I suppose we could smooth out almost the entire floor and that would probably be a worthwhile endeavor because we seem to be using this entire floor for just nice stuff or stuff where we don't want our dwarves to feel bad in them. So I'm going to go about smoothing all of this. We do have quite a lot of dwarves now, I'll, I'll also add. Let's go ahead and just smooth out this smooth boy out all of that and go down here. I want the tunnel smoothed as well. That's nice. That's nice. And we'll also do, um, we'll carve faces into the rest of the dining room. That looked good. Okay, statues of crops. Ah, that would be nice. Ah, uh, yes, like we had all the names of all of the tiles on the floor. The point of barricades. That was another one. The corridor of romance. The sheen of holds. The stable simplicities. We don't obviously have them for the smoothed floor because no one's ever created like a, a relief of a story in there. But it is nice. That th I thought that was components in the wall. Tables, chairs, decorative stuff. A value that, that affects citizen satisfaction. Yes, it seems as though the more rich stuff we put in, the happier they are. Like all dwarves are very materialistic snobs. Let's just smooth out everything and vastly increase the wealth so that we'll probably get horrible... Horribly uh, targeted by enemies who target us for wealth. 
targeted by the people who target us. I'm at a loss of words. I gotta say that this is like the most confused I've been after uh, playing a lot. Look, and our farms are so full of plump helmet seeds because of that work order we did. That feels good. I feel like I did something right for once. <laughs> you might even get that feeling when you play this. But here we are. Uh, v? I want to smooth out our whole main entrance as well. This is looking a little bit better. I do say. Engravers depict depictions of fort battles and events. Ah, yes. With things that actually occurred at, in your fort. Like when somebody fell down a well and broke his leg. Now, we do have three unhappy dwarves. So, I'm going to go ahead and say... There's two things I want to do for the rest of this. Because I know we've kind of stumbled around. And I, I, we're kind of expecting that. But that's good. We, I've learned. Honestly, I've learned the most. Maybe I will learn more than you. But I do want to channel out the water. So, uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and assign some horrible and long task. For something that's probably going to end in all of our mutual destruction. Um, okay. Personally, I think it would be an exciting task if we managed to get water up to our hospital somehow. So I'm going to embark on a very long and difficult and stupid task that's probably unnecessary of channeling water out of the river and then up into the hospital. Why? Because it's cool. Even if it's a stupid idea, I want to do it. And I, I'll learn about the way that the water levels off because I don't know if it just stops at the level where it is. I mean, I imagine that the water pressure would probably keep it at that level, but I don't know if we could somehow, like, winch it up into place. Hey, so hey, I think if we just embark amphibian. on some stupidly difficult task that we don't know how to do, we're going to be... We're going to learn the most, so that's why I want to do it. Um, someone will drown, probably, but it'll be a, a great drowning, and there will be many engravings of it, and I, I'll, I'll have a great time. Uh, Volgak, thank you very much for the four months. And, uh, Eitmare, 21. And Sim Simplicity, thank you very much for the subs. Okay, uh, where else, what else are we doing? So, yeah, needing screw pumps, power it with a water wheel, water lifting water. I think we should embark on something insanely stupid and unnecessary. Because I think we would learn a lot about the game. I'm just gonna do it my way, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say that right now, because... Yeah, I, there's, so, there's such a thing as playing smart, and there's such a thing as playing fun, and we've done a lot of playing smart. But I also just want to do something that I can understand with my reptile brain right here. And I understand water, uh, and it, water is wet. Water is definitely wet. That's my stance on the wetness of water. But let's go ahead over here. We're going to go to the river. <laughs> We're going to mine all the way right up to about there, and we'll just leave that. Maybe we'll have floodgates or something like that, but I just think it would be a very nice contraption to have there. And let's see what tile we're trying to get this to. So our hospital is up here, and I'm thinking it would be a good idea. Well, it, really none of this is a good idea, so take that tongue in cheek, but let's go up to maybe this tile, and then we'll go this way. And then above that, we'll just do this. Hmm, will this work? Well, we'll probably need a stairway near it so that we can get up and down for a moment. So we're going to need to set this up right, and we'll put it into the wall. Why do I want to put it into the hospital? Because doesn't it seem like a good idea to have flowing water in the hospital? Otherwise, it'll just be stagnant water, and we'll have done it wrong. But we'll learn, you know? And I think that that's exciting. So I'm thinking that they'll do this. Of course, they won't build this at all right now, because there's no way to access this tunnel. Oh, wait, no, I stand corrected. Um... Whoops, uh, let's dig around it. Or we'll do M and T, and we will mine our stairway down to it. So we have some stairway that they can go up and down just next to the shaft that we're going to channel the water through. I mean, maybe we'll flood our entire fort if this really goes bad, which I think would be an amazing way for the series to end, and totally worthwhile. So here goes uh, Irvad... He's pretty much the only dwarf whose name I remember because he's been the one we've been following around who's been doing the mining. And there he goes, and he's he's digging so quickly to the water that will probably get us all killed. Um, we haven't channeled any of this, so we are going to need to channel, I suppose. Water will pass through a corner and reset its pressure. If you give a direct orthogonal path, it's fun until it's at surface level again. Um, water is stupid dangerous. Well, I think that's a great place to start. <laughs> I'm just going to throw caution to the wind. Water is scarier than fire and lava combined. It will fill until it reaches the highest level until... 
Okay. So we should be somewhat careful here. All right, so pretty much I've sealed my own doom for this. Um, all right, so then let's have the stairway... Hmm. Let's do like a bit of a controlled experiment first then. Okay. <laughs> this will be fun. So I'm going to go above ground. Or let's go to this hilltop maybe. We might kill a dwarf here. Yeah, carving out the entire plumbing system before letting in any water in. I'm just going to do it on an area that doesn't matter then. Let's do it at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> M-T. And we're going to dig out a staircase beneath the river over here. I'm going to do one as a test this side. Everyone's trying to get in on the way of my fun. I'm learning. I'm learning. You learn by messing up. So don't, don't stop me. Okay, I'm gonna have a good. I'm gonna have a good time. We're gonna mine out here. Whoops. Uh, whoops. A daisy. We're gonna mine on this level and into the ones below it. There we go. Good. So we've got that. Maybe it'll come up the staircase. I don't know if it. I mean, water is very polite to staircases, right? So let's just do that. Okay, and let's have this instead of maybe. Doing the thing that I had in mind first. Let's work on this one. There we go. Time is back on. Although he is mining out this entire thing. Let's just cancel that for a moment. Nope. Stop that. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Goodbye. Eh, go outside. Go outside. I have a different job for you. To your most probable death. It will come up the staircase if it has been pressure corrected through a corner flow. So what is a corner flow then, I guess? As we're mining our way to our doom. Uh, we could get a floodgate. We might want to do that. I mean, he, don't worry. He'll be okay. He's not doing anything. He's not doing any real damage yet. This is what everybody came to see. <laughs> um, if it hasn't, yes. <laughs> I love how, like, the people who have been helping me along <laughs> are now very worried. Uh, pump water to make it rise. Okay, that's fair. I'm afraid, what if it's not as dangerous as you say? What if it's not as dangerous as you say? And then I, I mess something up. Water is fun, and it's always the best thing to experiment. That's what I was thinking. Yes, I think that the failed geoengineering... Let's just do something stupid right off the bat. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I'm going to make it happen. I mean, the worst thing I could do is flood the entire plane. Okay, there it goes. Oh, holy... Cow, Jesus, he's running away. Okay, we can cancel that one because it's already coming through the diagonal. Nope, it's too late to wait now. It's too late to wait. That Oh, this is a corner flow. So I think I understand what you're saying then. So I probably just totally messed this up then. It's in a terrible spot, but that's what it is. So suppose that I had made it flow orthogonally, and then I will do experiment number two. So here come the fish. <laughs> That's very exciting. Uh, okay, so here the water goes in level seven and it's flowing through as level four or three and eventually it's going to settle. But I'm assuming that it's not going to go up because I made it a quarter flow. I can channel dig above. Well, it's got a staircase. Maybe it'll get through the staircase. What about that? What about that? Why does that make any physical sense if it comes through a corner? Well, you know what? I'm going to prepare the next stupid part of my experiment that will follow this right uh, shortly hereafter. Let's go ahead over here and we'll do MT and we're going to dig downward. Down. There we go. That way I can get a good orthogonal self-destructive pulse of water. And then, you know, we'll do the channeling and stuff later on. But let's... um. <laughs> there he goes. Uh, whoops! Uh, whoops! Wrong button. There we go. Let's let's keep digging. Downward. <coughs> excuse me. Over to here, and then we'll go this way, and then we'll do this, and then we'll just get right up to it because it looks like we're still not fully done with this experiment. Now this is full of water, this cavern, and this is mostly full, but the sevens are coming through. It's taking a while, but I want to see what happens when it fills up right there. Is it going to come up the staircase? Nope, that miner will live. He will live. Do not doubt me. Do not question me. Okay, so now we're getting up to a full seven. 
I'm not seeing this come up the stairway, and I'm assuming that's because we got a corner flow. But now... <laughs> Uh, we're gonna try to get a, an orthogonal flow because I want to understand how this fully goes <coughs> You're better off messing up anyway okay, So now we've got like a solid seven here the rest of the water is flowed, but it's not coming up the staircase So it stays at that level But When we get back our minor dwarf, uh, where is he? Where is Irvad in Gizidos? Irvad Wait, did he drown? Idiot did he really drown? Wait a minute, did he drown? Where is he? Did I totally miss his drowning? Stra no, this trail. Paka starved to death. No, Irvad is fine. Where is he? Town uh, spinner is stricken by melancholy. Who cares? Dead missing tab. Uh, where is the dead missing tab? Dead and missing. He could be missing. He could be missing. <laughs> uh, whoops, there's much to share. I don't really need any uh, anything from the trader right now. I just don't have patience for trading. Population, I just added. Oh, dead and missing. Nope, you died. Oh, a troll. I didn't know that we had slain a troll. Nope, Irvad is fine. Okay, where is he? Irvad, I guess we'll sort by name. Where is our minor dwarf? Come back. Irvad and, and Gizados. Oh, he's training. He's on his grind. Well, we're, you know, we're going to take him out of this uh, fighting thing because we don't really want him to fight. We, we want him to... Probably, he most probably will drown himself. Um, I don't want it to happen per se, but mm, what is it? We need to unassign him. That is assign a leader. Cancel an order. How does he? How do we get him out of it again? Patrol order. Borough defense. No, we don't want him to do any of that. We want him to just deschedule. Uh, trying to remember. Um. Are we? I just did this a second ago. Schedule? No, he's not in there. How do I just take him off of this squad entirely again? Oh, just click his name in the tab. Yeah, there we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so he's fo uh, we're following him. He's the bone doctor. Okay, good. He's going back down to mining. Dig! Get the water out of there. I want to see if you can swim. Here we go. And there he goes. One, two, three. And now... Oh, no. What are you doing now? There we go. Good. Back to work. Chop, chop. Uh, he's... Where is he doing? What are you doing? Okay, good. He's back to the digging. He just went over the river, but here he goes back in. So that should be fine. Yep, I'm pretty sure at this point in time, we're just going straight in for it. So go, sir. Have at it. Okay. If what you were telling me is correct, then the water should just come up. Now nah, the cats will... They'll have enough time. Okay, so he's going to drown? He's going to drown? Well, then I would like to see that as well. I would like to see that as well. I gotta know what to be ready for. The cats are going down too. Maybe we should wait for the... Nope, I'm just doing it. I'm doing this for science, guys. I'm doing it. Oh, no, we're going to lose another one. Okay, maybe I'll wait a second. Everybody get out. I want only one drowning here. Wait until they've hauled all the valuable minerals. I mean minerals. There we go. Okay, time to go. Diplomacy, shmiplomacy. I want to see this. I want to see this. Send me uh, an anvil. <laughs> I don't even know what we want. What do I even want? You're telling me that this instantly fills? Make a vertical U-bend? Oh, make a tunnel with a vertical U-bend. Well, it's too late. I'm, I'm basically executing this man because I want to learn. I want to see it happen. No, it wasn't instantly felt. See, he had plenty of time. He had time to Indiana Jones it. <laughs> you guys were getting so worried over nothing. This is why I'm glad that I'm uh, testing things out, even though that you tell me not to. See, he had plenty of time. He had plenty of time. We're fine. We're fine. Channeling from above. Fair, fair. Okay, so now... 
I mean, the stairway is open, but nah, he had plenty of time. Look at how slow this water is coming through. He's a very fast runner. He has fast feet. He has a good turnover rate. He's been training. He's been training. It's true. I mean, on the one hand, like, I will say, like, I, I love you, chat, for helping me with this, but also, too, I want to make some mistakes. Build a wall once. Yes, also, too, what is it? They resist going into three high water. Like, they find one and two unpleasant or something like that. But will it just go straight up the stairs? Or is this how water works in this game? I mean, I've got a flowing stream, but it doesn't go over that level. Come to think of it, I don't think I've done enough experimenting with water in real life. I'm trying to remember how this works with sandcastles at the beach. I'm not a civil engineer or anything, but that's my vague understanding of it. Okay, so it, it fills up only to the level that it is naturally occurring at. You would... I assume you would need a winch. Unless if we have to channel above. That doesn't make any physical sense. Yeah, it wouldn't travel up the stairs. The water should flow up to the level that it goes to. And it's not like the water is trying to get up. Yeah. But I will channel it just because I want to make myself happy and see what happens. D... Guys, I wasn't good at natural science in school. <laughs> yeah. Let's also just make a hole here because I think it's funny to have a hole in the ground. Okay, so Irvad and Gizados should come back. His name is great to say. It's got all these Z's and D's. It's like Zapdos. Here comes Zapdos. Good, he's digging. Come, sir. Diggy diggy hole. There it goes. Anyway, he should still be able to use the stairway. Oh, there is the water below. That is so cool to be able to see from the surface the subterranean water, which links to the river now. Okay, so assuming that we wanted to bring this water up, um, I assume that we could do the whole thing with, what is it, the mechanisms, right? So we would go B... Machines and fluids, and then screw pump. Uh, vertical water pressure will fill a for it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the vertical water pressure is the one that it, it looks at first, right? I was looking into the like the code about how Tarn did it. Like, it. like it checks vertical first, and then it checks around it, which is quite amazing. But it kind of leads you to understand how it works. Kind of Minecrafty in that way. Um... <laughs> Everyone's like, it's, don't do that, it's dangerous. <laughs> no, we'll do more of it. The floodgate, we probably could have used more mechanisms, and obviously we can't do as much with it now, and I'm seeing why that corner thing is a, like a safer way to go about it. So, thank you for that. But now the screw pump to move liquids upward from the elevation below the pump to the same elevation as the pump. So, if we wanted to build one of these things, and I know that we don't have all the mechanisms for these things, would we, I assume, just put the thing here? Or would we go all the way up to the top? Because then we're... Uh, we would also need a water wheel to, pop, to pump it. But I'm thinking, what if we could use a water wheel to use the river's motion to pump water into this whole plane to then pump the running river water in a powered way onto the plane? Maybe we would have to put the river wheel somewhere safer, but... Um, it would want it only one Z level above the water's current position. Okay, thank you very much. So you would pretty much need to... I mean, that was how, what I kind of had in mind from the beginning. Yeah, water world. So you can make the entire thing full of water. It would be neat. So I guess you would need multiple water pumps. Can you put multiple water pumps one level above one another? Oh, you could stack them. That's amazing. So we could just do doot, doot, doot. And then, okay, yeah, this is amazing. Build an aqueduct tall enough. Aqueducts. This is why this game is cool, because real life ideas of engineering kind of work in it. Anyway, um... That might be as far as I go today with the water, and I know I'm not going to go into anything crazier, but I know I'm going to be banging my head against a wall if I do anything more wild. I wanted to carve out some of the water because I wanted to understand a bit of the fluid mechanics, but I'm not ready to do anything crazy in a way that I... I'll figure it out on my own and do some experimentation, uh, but neat. Anyway, a cool thing to explore, and I just wanted to at least make sure we got to that. Our fortress is quite amazing, except we keep getting carried off on tangents because I'm learning things. Oh, oh my god, that's a huge goat! What the hell is that? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know that that was in the game. Ah, uh, <laughs> That's huge! There they go. 
cool. I wonder if they'll go down into the tunnel and swim through the tunnel. Because they have giant lungs. Presumably they could hold them for a longer period of time. But they're more... Well, I have so many thoughts about those goats, but we'll, we'll just leave them for now. No, don't go so near them. Oh, they're putting all of the trogl... There are literal troglodytes in this game! Oh, yes, I'm recalling this. There actually are troglodytes in Dwarf Fortress. How could I have been so naive to have forgotten that? Or so, uh... Oh, wow, have they... Whoa, have they trodden a path here from the walking around on this? Is... Do my eyes deceive me, or is that what actually happened here? Whoa! I didn't know this was a thing. Dwarf Fortress is even cooler than I imagined it would be. Very cool. Very amazing. It's almost as if Tarn and Zack programmed every possible thing into the game. Anyway, uh, I'm finding it's fun to alternate a cool thing like that with a boring thing that keeps my dwarves like happy and stuff. So let's go ahead and engrave faces into the all over the tavern because I'm being told that pretty much uh, engraving faces into everything is going to make them happier. So, I mean, I'm willing to do it just because I think our dwarves, some of them are unhappy. One of them was, like, upset as a child because of his deceased relatives, all of whom I am probably responsible for their deaths. But let's go ahead into our dwarves' thoughts because, again, probably not a bad way to learn it. Oh, you're not even a dwarf. You're just a human. This isn't human fortress. This is dwarf fortress. So, you have a history of thoughts. You're... You feel satisfied while yelling at somebody in charge. Pleasure while performing. You like the cent to be the center of attention, don't you? Love remembering talking with father. Oh, no. What, it was his father that died, wasn't it? I guess relations we could go into. Um, Yeah, asked Abag Jeanette. This is the dwarf who died when I, we were off screen. So uh, I'm going to go ahead back down to the tombs. This is... Oh, no, this is Ast Adam. They were both named Ast. Okay, never mind. It happens to be a common name. I mean, maybe his father is still alive. I don't know. I'm going to need to go further into that, but definitely somebody else died, so I'm going to put another tomb in here. Let's go ahead and make, um, what was it? Furniture. Tomb, tomb, tomb. There we go. And they will bury these people in there and probably, well, hopefully, take them out of the corpse pile. I'm going to make more in here, though. I'm liking this catacombs floor. This is kind of moody. Maybe get some water flowing through this tool. I'm being told by chat that I can create an artificial waterfall with mist that makes the dwarves happy too, which is quite amazing. I'm not really ready for it though because we've only just begun scratching the surface of the water and that's, well, it's cool, but I just think I'm probably going to more likely to drown them. Oh, Jesus. Each engraving is an opportunity to get the stood near fine engraving moodlet and they stack? So for them, this is like standing in a cathedral. That is amazing. Whoa. So we could pretty much just en engrave faces into everything. Oh, this must have been where the troglodytes came up. Hang on a moment. Yes, pick up that troglodyte, please. Would someone please pick up this disgusting troglodyte? Now, I know how to do this now. I can allow this area. Good, so they will pick up the troglodyte remains. Oh, there's so many troglodytes in here. The one thing is that it's easy to skip past the combat in this. Oh no, our ranger Eating died. in a legendary dining room gives dwarves happy thoughts. Taverns don't count. Uh, thank you very much. As well as for the thousand bits, Slippery John. I do appreciate that. So the dining room. I mean, we were already working on the dining room. I suppose we could spend some time making some statues. I mean, it is very much like that. So you pretty much just went down there and took matters into your own hands, and now you're dead. And you probably deserve to be dead, so we're going to leave you down there. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to put him in the tomb where he belongs. Uh, a little bit, I was thinking that my dwarves might just encounter people. Micromanaging them to stay in one place and zone and, and forbidding, I'm just not ready to go through with yet, so... I'm just going to let them continue have dangerous adventures. Somebody broke their leg, a crocodile was killed down here, and someone was murdered by troglodytes. So I think that that's exciting to just leave this as a, a mysterious and dangerous cavern. Uh, <laughs> they keep finding new areas, and like it does seem to keep going down beyond where we can even see. It looks so much like Caves of Cud here. Oh, that really makes me want to go back and play Caves of Cud.
Beautiful. Resident Monster Slayers. Yes, the Monster Slayers seem to have moved in. We have humans who are... Well, now they're all getting unhappy because of all of their deaths. So, I mean, we are getting like a fortress that is spiraling out of control. It is very much like RimWorld in Less that way, it seems. Hey, right, Crassius Curio. Thank you very much for the four months. Um, petitions... Uh, are more monster slayers want to uh, live here? Tyrist skull constructs. That's a good name. Probably a human because humans are so tall and uh, uh, chivalrous. Here we go. Uh, I have started to notice the sound of this. One thing I'm going to go ahead and do here because I don't think that it's set up enough by default is can we raise the. I'm going to raise the sound effects volume because I'm assuming that this is going to... And this might be a bit loud. Let me just see it. No, that's not really the ambience. Ambiance. Oh, there comes the human slayer. I mean, the, you know... Where do we dwarf or a human? Where do we see that? Overview. Oh, he's an axe dwarf. It is a dwarf. It's not a human. Ah, great. Great to be with you, short one. You are welcome here. Okay, anyway. Um... What was I saying? Oh yeah, carving out the stones, doing all of that. Human slayers, handsome and cool people. That wasn't what I was trying to say. If we get our farms up. Our plump helmet farms are full of them, that is quite good. What was I planting in this farm? This farm was for mostly for pigtails, which we were using for thread. Uh, plump helmets, apparently we are out of plump helmet seeds again? I'm assuming that we have more plump helmets in storage, so let's keep checking on our socks. I'm actually starting to feel like I'm getting a hang of all of the, not all of the basics, some of the basics. Seeds. Oops, uh, not seeds. Nope, that's not what I meant to look for. Stocks, we are looking for not ammunition. This should be under food. Or no, plants. It's so wonderfully specific. Plump. Yep, we have 68 plump helmets left over. So then I suppose 100 seeds wasn't enough. Let's raise that order in our kitchen so that we have yet even more plump helmet seeds. And then we can make, yes, you guessed it, more of them. Mm, we would do that here in our brewery. Brew drink from plant. And let's check on our work orders just to make sure. Okay. Satisfied. So they are still working on it because there's not enough seeds. Let's just keep raising the number anyway because... Well, we might just not have enough dwarves to do this work. Or we might need to make more workshops at this point in time. Finally, expansion and, and growth of that. There's a mod that adds sound to the alerts. I found that, I think there's one of them up there. We might want to turn off some of these because some of these notifications I am finding quite... Like, yeah, somebody... Uh, actually, the possessed one, we would have... Oh, wait. Um, Alon getting possessed. I believe that's a good thing. Actually, isn't it? Doesn't it mean that he's going to create a masterwork? Like he's gone insane and he's going to try to make something that's. Yeah, we might need to deal with that right now. Alan, uh, like us. Yeah, you are crazy. Okay, so you are 66 year old and you're crazy. And <laughs> what are you doing? You are in a strange mood. Only if he gets what he needs. Oh boy, yes, it's good. Yeah, I think he spends his time in there and he's like, ah, uh, and then he has a catharsis. Yeah, if he possesses, otherwise he's just going to murder everyone, and then we'll have a lot of blood on the floor. How are you liking the game? Also, YouTube bid on this soon? Nums Gaming, thank Nums C Gaming. Thank you very much for the 400 bits. Probably not on the main channel for, I would say, at least a month, if I do decide to do one. I love the game, but I, I am woefully inadequate at it, so I'm just learning a lot. Uh, I'll keep doing the kind of bumbling through on the VOD channel, though. And an average burrito, thank you for the prime. I like learning this way. Um, but yes, I, th I do think it would be fun. Okay, we'll have plump hel helmets here again in the off season because I just think we want to maximize our plunk. Uh, excuse me, plump helmets. Uh, food is kind of getting low. Uh, we have plenty of drinks. Maybe we should start cooking some of our plump helmets. I think that would be good. Uh, okay, let's do that because it's a, it's a decent source of food. We can get it year round. And I'm not as afraid of running out of seeds anymore, but I'm going to be very careful with this order. So let's go into our work orders, and let's go ahead and say... Hmm, or is there something else? Is there another year-round food source we could use? Maybe that would be a better way to start. 
and then we'll start to kind of mess around with them. And in the meantime, we do have all of this. Let's go ahead and mine out more farming areas here. I don't really know why I'm making these this dimension. I think I just like the way it looks. I know they aren't perfectly. Well, whatever. It's fine that they don't need to be perfect. Five. Okay, so we'll put, I guess, two spaces between each of them. I just like the way this looks better. It, it, it kind of reminds me of, I don't know, like a hobbit hole or something like that. Very kind of Tolkien. Uh, do that. And then I suppose that. It's kind of pretty. I mean, it's not very functional, but it's pretty. And I think I think that prettiness kind of matters here. So we'll do that. And it looks like that, that fungus is spreading around as well. That's nice. Uh, so let's go B, W. Oh, whoops. No, not W. B. Oh, here we go. Let's do it with the UI. Um, bleh. B, workshops, which starts with an O. And then we'll do farming and farm plot again. There we go, and use closest material. Oh, yeah, we can repeat, that's nice. So we can just, ah, being able to replace many of them repeatedly is quite a nice feature beyond the legacy version. Although I do like the way that you kind of grow out the plot in the legacy version with the numpad. Don't use plus and minus. Uh, this game is like inputting things into a 1980s Microsoft Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is, I have no idea, um, but yeah. Playing the legacy version made you feel, like, oddly nostalgic for old computers. Okay, we've encountered a goblin, 448 years old. Who is he? He has no relation. He has no family. So, or he has a personality, though. Values, he personally views competition as a crucial driving force in the world. Respects fair dealing and fair play. Disregards tradition Can and values honesty. The Although, the goblin is, like, coming up the stairs and trying to kill us. So, I mean, it did say... I mean, a gremlin... But are we just judging him? Now I feel oddly, like, existentially connected. He's very curious and sometimes to his detriment. He dislikes obligations and we'll try to... Move. Let's just follow him around for, I don't know, maybe a few minutes. He's minding his own business. He's running around underground. Dodging... Ugh. We should have killed him. Darn it. I wonder if he's still on the units. <laughs> I was totally thinking of doing that, but I, I didn't think we would lose him. No, there he goes. Gone. Yeah, there he is. Yeah, maybe he'll just get himself, I don't know, crushed by a giant rock or something. He's not under others, but we didn't. We have an echidna. Okay, well, in this, in the meantime, we, we kind of wanted to give our squad some training. So let's have our squad kill this echidna. He is annoyed when caught in the rain and terrified while in conflict. So we will take him out. Let's go ahead and assign our hatchets of passion. And no, you know, I think I'm going to have the free crystals do this because I want to see if our ranged combat is any good yet. So after him, because he's different. And let's go ahead and... There we go. Oh, we are... Okay, we are not unpaused here. We are following the echidna. Oh, we needed to confirm. No target. Oh, now we need to target the echidna. Target the echidna. How do we do this? Oh, here we go. Scroll over that echidna. Confirm. Okay. So it was just very, very exact the way that it did it. So let's go routine kill echidna. There it goes. It's like our first encounter. Let's see if they come out of the fort. They should this way. Yeah, there they go. After the echidna. Take him down. We're running out of food. Oh, I almost missed the fight. Hang on a second. I've scrolled down one level too many. Take him down. Kill him. Overexerted. Faint. Oh my god, he didn't even put up a fight. A spattering of echidna blood. There's something going on now. A gremlin. Okay, the gremlin is back. Causing trouble again. So now we will take out the gremlin. So let's go ahead and fight him. Okay, so this is... Oh, now the gremlin disappeared again while we were fighting the echidna. Did I just d disband both of my squads? No, they're still there. Uh, no, I did. I totally did by accidentally pressing that X. Ah, uh, that is annoying. 
Okay, we need to go ahead and recreate that. But anyway, that was our combat. <laughs> that was our, like, one minor foray into combat, so I wanted to do a little bit of that. I'm going to summarize everything that we kind of did super fast, just because I, I think it, it kind of deserves it. Um, just kind of by going through the whole fort, and then I, I'll update everybody. So I'm feeling pretty oversaturated with the amount of stuff Chad has told me. I'm sure that this YouTube VOD will be very edited down, but we've been sitting here for about four hours, and I've just learned so much about the game that I am feeling kind of, uh, like, full of new knowledge. And I, I need to kind of digest it for a while. So I'm just going to summarize everything that we did really fast. So, I mean, our fort... I didn't even know if we had food right. I now feel very confident in our drinking situation with that work order on drinking. Uh, as far as food goes, we are running a bit lower on food. We still seem to be making some of it, but I want to get planting going with quarry bushes. But I'm, I'm going to have to trade for some more seeds or gather underground. I think underground farming is going to be the best. We're feeling slightly more defensible with all these monster hunts. Uh, excuse me, monster hunters having come in. Our defenses were slightly built up from the wall. It's really not perfect. It's not perfect at all. Wait, then we just found a lot of cool things about the game. Like the way that people carve paths when they walk in them. I didn't even know that that was in Dwarf Fortress at all. And then we did that bizarre exp Well, we killed an echidna. We did a tiny bit of combat. Uh, we have a ton of alerts coming up. And then we started channeling water and trying to drown ourselves all almost. Uh, we didn't because it was just a wacky experiment as it turned out. And we weren't really trying to do it in the first place. But um, we, we did more workshops. We had a dwarf get possessed momentarily. And he was trying to work at the boyer's workshop. But we didn't really have the stuff for him. So we were starting to smelt magnetite and hematite or crazy. This is going to make us iron bars or is it steel, whatever it is. Bars of metal. And we're trying to make charcoal. We could do a magma forge. We've got butchering going on. Honestly, guys, <laughs> I was learning Dwarf Fortress back when I had like 100 subs. And so it was always one person with some very pointed combat. But now I've got so many tips that I'm just kind of overwhelmed. But I'm probably learning faster than any other human is, has ever learned anything before on Dwarf Fortress. So I'm hoping that by the time that this series is done, we will be able to get it into a much more kind of concise information dense one where I'll know where I'm, what I'm talking about. But a lot of failure here is going to lead to something good. So I'm excited about that. However, that being said, too, also a couple of cool contraptions where we're starting to get, honestly, just nicer looking architecture. I like the archery range. I'm going to see if I can find a few more contraptions that are uh, looking good. Again, this is uh, basically a da uh, Das Tactic construction. So, again, encouraging you guys to go check out other people's tutorials who have done a really good job on this game. Um, we tried to channel the water for the hospital. Maybe we'll try to get it up a lot. That would be terrifying and amazing. Um, I think it would be cool. And what other stuff? I mean, we went, we did dig a little bit deeper. I'm just going to zoom there. Oh, this was the magma. We did find magma. Maybe we'll try to do something with it. I've also been suggested mine carts. Maybe we'll do that the next time. But very cool nonetheless. And I mean, we're still, I would say, 50 hours into Dwarf Fortress. 60 hours. But even more amazing than I had really given it credit for. I just, this game is so kaleidoscoping. Uh, but I will leave it there, and I, I think I'm going to send chat over the way of uh, somebody who knows more about what they're talking about. But yeah, again, I hope that you're enjoying the series. I hope you're enjoying muddling through the game with me, and uh, more to come.